In this video, we talk about showing that a limit does not exist. Now, in general, this is difficult to do. If I have the limit as xy approaches x naught y naught of f of xy, and I want to show that it exists, um, if it's not continuous, but it's zero over zero, I might have to get clever, and I might have to go back to the epsilon delta definition to prove that that limit exists. Um, now, if the limit doesn't exist, um, I might have some problems with that too. It's, it's difficult to prove in general um, that a limit of a function of two variables doesn't exist. Um, but one way that we can prove a limit doesn't exist is to use two paths that um, go through this uh, location x naught y naught. So let's say this is your surface, or you've got a surface, and here's x naught y naught. Now it might be the case that along one path the z values approach one value. So if we're on this path, maybe the z values are approaching two. And then if we go through a different on a different path to x naught y naught, maybe through x equals x naught, um, we might find that z is approaching five on that path. It's strange. It's very difficult for me to draw um, something that looks just like that up here. But there might be some surface, and it's not going to be smooth uh, near this. Uh, I'm not doing a very good job drawing it. Um, nearing uh, near um, f of x naught y naught, um, the limit doesn't exist because if you approach that point through two different paths, you might get two different z values. I've drawn something where the limit exists every direction, you're getting the same z value. But maybe it's the case that like there's a, a large like, crevice here or something, and then on one path, the z values are way down here, and then on another path, the z's are approaching three or something like that. Who knows? Um, but if you are approaching x naught y naught through two different paths and you get two different values for your z's, the limit doesn't exist. That's hard to draw in 3D, but it was easy to think about and talk about back in Calculus 1. So back in Calc 1, remember we would look at a graph like this. Let's say that we're looking at the graph as x approaches 3. Maybe from one side, as x approaches 3, the y values approach 4. But then maybe on the other side, the y values approach 5. Well, we said back in Calc 3 that this limit didn't exist. Or excuse me, back in Calc 1 that this limit didn't exist. The limit as x approaches 3 from the left of f, f of x is 4. And the limit as x approaches 3 from the right, well, the y values on the graph as x approaches 3 from the right are approaching 5. So since we got two different limits when we're coming from two different directions um, as x approached 3, in general, this limit as x approaches 3 doesn't exist. You don't get two limits. You can only have one. Um, something similar might happen over here. There might be some paths that approach zero, um, x naught y naught that give us one z value, and other paths that approach x naught y naught that give you a totally different z value. Um, now, it might be the case that the function is nice and um, everything is smooth and everything works out. Uh, excuse me, not smooth. Um, it might be the case um, that, that this limit where you have a 0 over 0 indeterminate form, it might be the case that the limit does exist. But I'd have to use, prove that using the epsilon delta definition which is difficult, so we're going to save that for another class. Now, but if I want to prove that a limit doesn't exist, all I have to do is basically this. I have to find two paths that approach my point that give me two different function or two different limiting values. That's a little different with um, surfaces, though, because I'm approaching 0, 0, and I can't just approach 0, 0 from the left and the right. When I'm approaching 0, 0, I can approach 0, 0 from any direction I want in the xy plane. As long as I'm on a path that passes through 0, 0, um, that's fair game. And through every single path that goes through 0, 0, I have to get the same limit for the limit to exist. Um, now, 
I will tell you in advance, show me that this limit does not exist or find the limit. When I say find the limit, that means the limit exists and you can go looking for it using the methods that we talked about in the last video. Um, if I ask you to show me that the limit doesn't exist, don't give me five paths that all give you zero and then say the limit must be, exist and it must be zero. Um, finding multiple paths that give you the same limit does not prove anything. We've got to prove it's true for all the paths. Um, so if I ask you to show me that the limit doesn't exist, what I'm asking you to show me, or I, what I'm doing is I'm telling you in advance that the limit doesn't exist, and I'm asking you to find two paths through this point, x not y not that give you different limits. Um, probably the easiest way to handle this is um, if, I'm, if I'm trying to show that this limit doesn't exist, I could show that this limit doesn't exist by going along two paths that pass through 0, 0. So let's go along the path x equals 0. Remember, x equals 0, that's the y-axis. So we're approaching 0, 0 on the y-axis. Then I've got the limit as 0y approaches 0, 0. So I'm going to replace my x with a 0. And now I've got the limit as 0y approaches 0, 0 of y divided by y. Now that is a 0 over 0 indeterminate form, but we know we can simplify that. And that's not an indeterminate form. That limit is 1. The limit of 1 is 1 as y approaches 0. So along this line, along um, the y-axis, which is given by x equals 0, the z values on this graph approach 1. Now I need to find a different path that goes through um, 0, 0 that gives me a different limit. Now you might be tempted to put in y equals 0. Just go along the x-axis instead but we can't do that because then we're going to have x divided by 0 or x squared divided by 0 and that doesn't exist, that doesn't make sense. Um, so we don't want to go, well, I guess we could go along y equals 0 but I think I'd rather go along something a little bit um, simpler. I don't want to think about infinite limits at this point. Um, so I want to choose a path that passes through 0, 0 where this is all going to simplify nicely um, one path where everything would simplify nicely is along y equals x squared. So if I'm on y equals x squared, that's this parabola. That definitely passes through 0, 0. When x equals 0, y is 0. And if y equals x squared, I'm going to have x squared plus x squared divided by x squared. So everything's going to simplify really nicely. So I'm going to, I'm going to try that path next. And hopefully I don't get 1. If I get 1, Test is inconclusive, I need to try something else. So along y equals x squared, let's take the limit. So I've got the limit as, let's say, x and x squared approaches 0, 0 of x squared plus y over y, and y is being replaced by x squared. Check it out, guys. You see what happened? Now I've got the limit as x and x squared approach 0, 0 of 2x squared over x squared. Those are going to reduce and give me a 2. So as x and x squared approach 0, 0, the limit is 2. So I go along this path, the z's are approaching 1. I go along this path, and the z's are approaching 2. So there's some weird fold in my surface. It's hard to even imagine. Um, we could graph this in Wolfram Alpha or GeoGebra or Desmos. I don't know if Desmos.com can do um, 3D graphs, but we can graph this and see what happens near 0, 0. But I know along one direction, I get 1, and then along a different direction, I get 2. Um, so it's kind of like this. As I approach, along, approach 0, 0 on this curve, I get one limit, and I approach 0, 0 on this curve, I get another limit, so the limit does not exist. So that's my conclusion. Since the limit along x equals 0 is 1, and the limit along y equals x squared is 2. In general, the limit does not exist.
the limit of this function as xy approaches 0, 0 does not exist. Don't write equals DNE, just say DNE because it means it does not exist. All right, so we found two paths that pass through 0, 0 and got you there. Now I've had many students say, can't I just plug in x equals 1 and y equals 1? Well, you could, but x equals 1, y equals 1, that's not a path that passes through 0, 0, so it's not going to work. It needs to be a path that passes through that point. Since 0 squared equals 0, and since x equals 0 passes through 0, 0, both of those worked. Um, now if I got one path that gave me a 1 and another path that gave me a 1, it would tell me nothing. I'd have to keep going until I find two different paths that give me two different numbers. Getting the same number and over, and over and over again is no guarantee that the limit exists. It just means you haven't found a direction that gives you a different limit yet. So with that in mind, let's look at this one. I am still approaching 0, 0. And I want two different paths. Um, so let's, actually, I think this one's pretty easy. Let's try um, along x equals 0. x equals 0 is the y-axis. So I've got the limit as uh, x is replaced by 0. 0, y approaches 0, 0 of 0 to the 4th minus y squared over 0 to the 4th plus y squared. So now I've just got the limit as y approaches 0 pretty much of negative y squared over y squared. Well that's going to reduce to negative 1 and the limit of negative 1 is negative 1. So that's easy. And along, that was along x equals 0. Along y equals 0, that's the x-axis. This is almost too easy. I'm replacing my y with a 0. I've got x to the 4th minus 0 squared over x to the 4th plus 0 squared because I'm replacing the y with a 0. Now well, x to the 4th over itself is 1. Now most of the time the paths aren't just x equals 0 and y equals 0. It's most of the time that doesn't work, but this time it did. Um, this time I got a different limit on x equals 0 as I did compared to the one on y equals 0. Um, so I'm going to say um, since these two limits are not the same, the limit as x, y approaches 0, 0 of the function does not exist. All right. So that's your goal. Your goal is to find two different paths that pass through your point of interest, your x not, y not, that give you two different limits. If you can do that, then the limit doesn't exist. Now if you keep getting the same limit, you're not done yet. You've got to keep going until you find two limits that differ from each other, or two different paths that give you um, different limits.